All right, everybody, welcome back. So, the signature weapon of the F-14, the Phoenix, has been buffed. What does that mean for you? Now, I do just want to throw a disclaimer. I'm running six Phoenixes right here purely for the video. Please do not actually do this in actual games. I see a lot of people that run six Phoenixes and then immediately turn and run back to base once I fire them all off. That's not a good way to win games, and these missiles were not effective enough, even after these buffs, to be able to go ahead and do so. So, the F-14. It is one of, if not, the best top tiers in the game. I would personally put the MiG-29 above it, but I would play this thing over the F-16 any day, personally. Uh, it is still 100% the best BVR platform in the game as well. You get the most long-range missiles out of any of the other top tiers with up to six radar missiles, either Phoenixes or Sparrows, whatever you prefer. Now, the Phoenixes did get buffed, which is part of the reason why I'm making this video, of course, but they are not going to be your main killing weapon. Those are going to be your AIM-7Fs, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. But the Phoenix. Now, like I said, it did get buffed. got quite a few changes. Uh, unfortunately, they did nerf the thrust. They dropped her from the Mark 60 motor with 17,000 newtons of thrust down to the Mark 47 motor with 14,000 newtons of thrust, give or take a little bit, depending on what source. Uh... But on the plus side, we did also go ahead and get a G buff from 16 to 17 Gs for the missile. And now it has lower drag and it lofts, which is a huge deal. Uh, this is the first missile that I'm aware of, at least in War Thunder, that actually actively lofts itself. Uh, when we go forward to stuff like the AMRAM, to stuff like the upgraded versions of the AIM-7M, not the initial AIM-7M that we have right now, we're going to see a lot more missiles that are lofting. But now that this one is working, we know that the game is actually capable of doing so. So this is a pretty big deal. By the way, look behind y'all. Don't trust your flares like I did right there. Unfortunately, the F-14 is very hot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show y'all a prime example of lofting right here. Uh, so, I see this IL-28. These missiles were made for killing bombers. So, I'm going to go ahead and fire one of him from 80 kilometers away, which is very, very far. And you can see the missile drops off the rails, and it's going up. And then you see it is climbing up above my aircraft right here. You can see it come out in front of my nose. And then right here... It's aimed probably 17, 20 degrees up in the air. This right here is lofting. So what the missile is doing is it's going to go ahead and climb up into thinner air where there's less drag. And so that'll allow it to accelerate faster up at those higher altitudes. And then just go ahead and dive down them from above. This helps it maintain energy better since there's less drag overall. And then when it's on its way down, it can use gravity since it no longer has a motor helping it. Now, I'm firing at 80 kilometers in this case purely because it's a bomber. And most of the time with fighters targets, you're going to be firing at like 30 or 40 kilometers just because of how worth Thunder's maps are set up. And you can see it doesn't even try to loft. It's most likely, honestly, in a lot of these head-on engagements, it's probably still going to be burning by the time it hits it because it burns for 30 seconds. Now, um, just to be totally clear, like I said, these missiles are not not made for killing fighters. Uh, they can, of course, and they will quite often. I have about a 50% hit rate with them uh, just because players in War Thunder aren't exactly the best. But don't be relying on them, unless it's something nice and big like an L-28. If we do get any jet bombers in the future, uh, these will become a lot more viable. I don't think we're going to get any big jet bombers like the B-52 or anything like that. They really don't have a place in the game. Uh, one thing I would like to see, however, is like an AWACS that would like spot people at longer ranges because the spotting system kind of sucks. And so whoever has F-14s in their team could have a big advantage because they can knock the AWACS out and they have spotting and the enemy team doesn't. Because, I mean, you can fire this thing from... 80, 90 kilometers away and hit a subsonic target like that IL-28 over there, no problem. Now, uh, I did say uh, I would not recommend running six of these. Now, if you're going to run Phoenixes, I'd run like maybe two or four of them. You can see right here, my favorite loadout right now is four Phoenixes, two M7Fs, and uh, two M9Hs. When you're using these Phoenixes and you want to get up to a nice high altitude, I recommend at least seven kilometers. I like trying to get to 10 kilometers or so, and you want to make sure you're at Mach 1 when you're firing them. These are big, heavy missiles. Uh, they need to get up to speed. And so the faster you're going when you launch them, the better, because they get more speed right off the bat, and they, you don't have to accelerate nearly as hard. Now, you do see, you are going to see a little bit of lofting, just like that right there. Most of the time, these shorter range engagements, you're not going to get to see much of it, unfortunately, even though I think it looks really cool. I'm super happy about this. Even though the Phoenix isn't the, the, you know, the uber good killer that you know a lot of people thought it would be on release, it's still a very fun missile to use. It's like a little mini game right at the start of the match. And by the way, that Mirage is going to die here in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and show off the F-14 itself now, not just the Phoenix, because this plane is absolutely stupendous. 
I would say it's the second best play in the game after the MiG-29, at least for Air RB. I prefer this thing over the F-16, partially because of the radar. You saw right there, for those of y'all who were quick to pay attention, uh, he was about to notch me. So what I did after I locked him up a pull stopler, you can actually switch your lock type while you're locked on to someone with this aircraft, which is a huge deal, which is why I like the F-14's radar more than the F-16's radar. Uh, I was in pull stopler, I was able to switch to normal search mode, and that meant that he couldn't notch me while the missile was on the way. If I was in the F-16 and that guy started to notch me, well, then I'm just out of luck. If he notches me, he notches me, and I gotta hope I can switch to pulse mode and back in time. Same thing with this right here, I just go ahead and lock him up in the normal search mode. And even though my radar is locked onto his chaff, that doesn't matter. For those of y'all who haven't seen my short, I did actually make a short talking about this, but essentially, your missile doesn't actually see what your radar is locked onto. All it can see are targets inside the area that's illuminated by the, by the radar. So in this case, it's still seeing an F-16 that is moving. It's looking at that Doppler effect in the radar coming back at it. And so it's still going to go for it, which is why you still need a notch whenever you're chaffing as well. Or you can just fly low and defeat the, all, all the missiles, like just like I did right there. Now, besides the radar, besides the missiles, the F-14 also has excellent flight performance. Now, the one area it's lacking right now is acceleration. Uh, the, the, we have the F-14A, which only has the TF-30s, and compared to the MiG-29 and the F-16, it does have very lackluster acceleration, but it still turns very well, especially with the wings forward and with the close combat flaps out, and you're able to absolutely dunk on any Gen 3 fighter, and you can keep up with a lot of the Gen 4s as well. It's just once you get to that low, lower speeds that you have a lot of issues, which is why I would usually recommend starting out high, just like this right here, dropping some phoenixes on people you know you might get two or three kills right at the start of the match and these early game kills are very important believe it or not you know the more people that are out at the start of the match the more that your team can focus on the few people that are left because let's just be honest most of your teammates probably aren't going to be the best so you want to make sure that you can knock out players as quickly as possible especially if you're able to knock out mig-29s for example uh a lot of them are going to climb to try and use our 27 ers which are the the most capable semi-active radar homing missile. And so when you get a lot of climbers, just like that making an right there, just knocked out. I just knocked out one of his 12-0s. This is a 12-0-11-0 match, if I remember correctly. So that's a quarter of their best planes gone right off the bat. And the F4S is a nice little bonus. And so then I'm up here at 8 kilometers. I'm way above them. They're not looking up. And I can just go ahead and drop, drop in with the aim hs which have just as much range as the aim l and are still very good at pulling. They're just not quite as capable as something like the A-Man-L. I am still of the opinion that this plane should go to 12.0. Uh, it's too good at 11.0 if you ask me. Sorry, 11.7 if you ask me. Unfortunately, it seems that Gaijin is not trying to move it up right now. I really think they should. It definitely deserves it. With this flight performance, coupled with the radar and the missiles, and I, it's not deserving at 11.7. It's not. It's better than the current S-2000 and the other stuff like I had at the same BR, so... Either way, I hope y'all enjoy the video. Uh, let me know what y'all think if you're having any luck with these new lofting phoenixes. I love saying that. But I'll see y'all next time, and I hope you enjoy the video. So, peace, y'all.